Now in the third part of this question, we're given that the weight of P is 32 newtons and that P is in limiting equilibrium. So we've got to show that the coefficient of friction between P and the slope is 0.879, correct to three significant figures. So if you'd like to have a go at this and you haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video. Do come back when you're done and you can check your work solution against mine. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So, first of all, what we're looking at is the particle P. And so I need to draw the forces acting on P. And so these forces that we had in the first part acting on Q, not really required anymore. So I'll just remove those. Now, on P, what we've got is the weight of P. So let's just put that in. We're told that the weight of P is 32 newtons. So put that in there. That's unusual when you just get the weight. Normally they give us the mass. So it's just going to be 32, not 32G. Okay, so it's the weight is 32 newtons. What else would we have? Well, when you start to put a weight in and you've got problems on planes, good idea actually to put in some uh, dotted lines. I'm going to put a dotted line down here, perpendicular to the plane. Should be used to that by now, okay? And this angle in here is always the same as the angle of the plane. So I'll just mark that in then as 30 degrees. Now next, because this is resting on a surface, there's going to be a normal contact force, the reaction. So we'll mark the reaction there and we'll give that the letter R, R Newtons then for that one. There'll also be a force trying to pull P off the plane. That comes from the tension in the strain. Remember the tension in the string was 6.4 Newtons. So we're going to have 6.4 Newtons pulling away in that direction. Just mark that in as 6.4 Newtons. Okay. And this angle in here, well that angle is also going to be 30 degrees. We've got alternate angles here if we take these two lines as being parallel. So worth marking that one in as 30 degrees. We're not done with the forces yet acting on P because the other force acting on P is friction. And we're told it's in limiting equilibrium. So in other words, it's just on the point of sliding down the plane. So friction must act in the opposite direction to motion, so that must act up the plane and that frictional force will be equal to the coefficient of friction mu times the normal contact force R. So I'm going to call it mu R, Newton's there. So they're all the forces now acting on P, keeping it in equilibrium. So what we need to do now is to, first of all, find out what R is, because R is in the force, the frictional force here, mu R. And to do that, what I would want to do is to resolve perpendicular to the plane, taking away from the plane as positive. Okay, you can take into the plane as positive if you want, but I'm going to take it away from the plane as positive, purely because that means that R will stay positive. So you've got all of R acting away from the plane. The frictional force here, mu R, will not enter into this equation because it's perpendicular to the direction that we're resolving in. But the weight is not perpendicular, it's inclined at 30 degrees. So we need to think of splitting this into two components. Those two components of the weight will be one into the plane and one down the plane. The one down the plane won't have any effect because it's perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in. But this one will have an effect and 
It's in the negative sense to what we're doing and it contains the angle. So it will be minus 32 cosine of 30 degrees. As I say, because it contains the angle. We should be familiar with resolving forces. OK, let's just remove those components of the weight. Now we've got the 6.4 newtons. That force is not perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in. So this too has to be split into two components. And the components of that tension would be away from the plane and down the plane. The one down the plane has no effect in this equation because it's perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in. We're only interested in this component of the tension. And because it doesn't contain the angle of 30 degrees in this 90 degrees, then it must be the force of 6.4 newtons sine of the angle 30 degrees. And it acts in the positive sense. So what we would have here is plus... 6.4 sine of 30 degrees. OK? Let's just remove those components again. So we've got our diagram here. And this is the resultant force acting on P away from the plane. But the particle is in equilibrium in the, this direction relative to the plane. So the resultant force must be equal to zero. And so we can rearrange this now and get what R is. OK, so we get R equals 32 cosine of 30 degrees minus 6.4 sine of 30 degrees. And if you work this out on your calculator, R turns out to be 24.5128 and so on. And that will be measured in newtons. Now I haven't rounded this because we're going to need it in the next part. Because in the next part, what I'm going to do now is to resolve down the plane. Okay, in the direction that this particle would want to move. So if I resolve down the plane, okay, we'll just illustrate that with an arrow down there, taking down the plane then as positive. What have I got? Well, I certainly haven't got R entering the equation because that's perpendicular to the direction I'm resolving in. If I take the tension, that is inclined at an angle of 30 degrees to the direction I'm resolving in, down the plane. So I need to think of splitting this into those two components again. Let's bring them back up. The one down the plane, because it contains the angle, will be 6.4 cosine 30 degrees. So all of that acts down the plane. So we'll start with that one. 6.4 then cosine of 30 degrees. The one away from the plane has no effect because it's perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in. So let's get rid of the components now from the tension. We're done with that. We'll come down to the weight now. The weight is inclined at an angle to the direction that we're resolving in, down the plane. It's certainly not perpendicular, so I need to split this into those two components again. Those two components, remember, would be one in this direction, away from the plane, and one down the plane. The one away from the plane has no effect because it's perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in. We just want this one down the plane. It doesn't contain the angle of 30 degrees, so it will be the sine now that we take. 32 sine 30 degrees. It acts in the direction of the positive sense, so it's going to be plus 32 sine of 30 degrees. So that's the components of the weight taken into account. So let's just remove those. And all we're left with now is the frictional force. And all of that acts in the opposite direction to the way we're resolving. So that would be minus mu r. 
Well, I found out what R is. It's 24.5128. So uh, we'll just put that in there as 24.5128 and so on. And this is the resultant force now acting on P down the plane. But it's in equilibrium. So that resultant force must equal zero. So it's just a question of rearranging this equation for mu. So if I add this term to both sides, I'll have 6.4 cos 30 plus 32 sine 30 equals mu times 24.5128. And then all I've got to do is divide both sides by 24.5128 and that will give me mu. So therefore mu will be equal to 6.4 cosine of 30 degrees plus 32 sine 30 degrees. And all of this is divided by the reaction which was 24.5128 and so on. And if you do this, you'll find that you get 0 0.8788 and so on. And we had to show that it was 0 0.879 to three significant figures. And that's exactly what it is. 0 0.879 then to three significant figures, 3SF. Okay.